ever queen. You died. I went to your kennel with you. The city is saving. What happened to you? The rights remain silent, but I don't I'm not a god anymore. anymore. Like I'm from the future. future. Because you can and inspire in the future, people. My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. Super cool. You did go to become a team. Hey, cuz. It's good to see you. This looks like a job for the both of us. Should not Absolutely. Be Heroes. The legends. You have failed this city. Ah! And welcome, you're listening to DC on CW, Supergirl Edition on Rain Man Digital. If you're listening from your desktop, you can take us mobile by downloading the Rain Man Digital app available in the iTunes App Store and Google Play. Simply search Rain Man Digital. You can also find us on demand through iTunes and Stitcher by searching DC on CW. And once you find us there, go ahead and leave us a review. So as always, uh, I'm Lauren. I'm here with Angelica and Bobby. Hello, hello. Um, And today we're going to be breaking down and discussing Supergirl Season 2, Episode 7, The Darkest Place. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) What? How do you you not laugh like that at that title? The Darkest Place. (laughs) They're all purrs. Um, So this week, the Guardian tries to clear his name after he's accused of murder while on a mission to rescue uh, Supergirl. On a... While on a mission to rescue mission, Supergirl is captured by Cadmus and comes face to face with Cyborg Superman. Words are good. Um, All right. So we have a little bit of uh, news and speculation, I guess, based on some things revealed in the episode. Um, Someone over at Inverse.com seems to think that Superwoman. All right. Sorry. Supergirl could add Batwoman. And it could revolutionize DC TV. I don't agree. At all. Like not even a little bit. I'm, I'm not I'm not into it. The person that was writing this article um, just did not catch me at all. So they say basically um, so Alex Danvers could become Batwoman on Supergirl. Like it seems like a stretch but bear with us. Supergirl's gone out of its way this season to tease the existence of the Bat family which that's a stretch of a statement. They haven't You're gone out of the way. You're just saying words at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they you know, they go through, okay, Alex Danvers and Kate Kane are different in a lot of ways. Kate's a wealthy heiress. And then, like, she attended a military academy before she was expelled for her sexuality. Um, she doesn't have a day job with the military or the DEO. And Alex isn't a mem- member of a wealthy, influential family, blah, blah, blah. This is all just, like, literally things about them. But... They're saying that for all their differences, they also have a striking number of similarities. Like gay, Um, obviously. (laughs) I mean, not the least of which being that they're both queer women fighting aliens and superhumans in the DC (laughs) universe. They're both also trained in combat. What? That's obviously a qualification for being that one. Just you just need to be gay and able to fight. Yeah. Uh, Albeit through different avenues, and they have vast resources at their disposal. Well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. See, um, and, and they, when I, they both use armor and experimental weaponry. And when I first read this, I was like, I I really like Alex and the the actress that plays her. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, cool. Then I didn't read the article. <laughs> <laughs> I did read I the article, and I was like, Meh. um, this person is just saying words. They, Yeah, they were like, the two also share similar abilities. Neither has superpowers or the help of alien physiology. Like, yeah, they're both human. That doesn't mean anything. No. (laughs) That doesn't mean anything. Um, Okay, so the one thing, the one thing that they did get right, not that all of that is incorrect, but the one thing that was like valid speculation is, okay, Maggie Sawyer. I don't think we really touched too much on, on like... Maggie Sawyer's relationship with Batwoman in comics beyond that. I I think we did mention that she is someone, um, someone that is linked to, to Batwoman in that way. So, um, Maggie, uh, and Batwoman got engaged back in like 2013 and like they're, they're a thing. They're like a, uh, they're together. I think that they're, 
I don't know. I, I think that they're still together, but they did just re- redo everything with Rebirth and Batwoman's uh, thing hasn't started and I haven't read Detective Comics yet. So I'm not sure. But either way, Maggie is like the girlfriend of Batwoman. So all right. Yeah, we get it. Um, that makes that makes sense to maybe speculate on that a little bit. But that's not enough for me. That's that's not enough for me to go. She's going to be Batwoman now. Well, and not only that, but like Green Arrow does a bunch of like Batman, Bruce Wayne esque things and they could just make her like the Batwoman kind of like they're not going to call her that. But for, yeah. for this universe, like in the TV universe. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, I don't feel like she needs a a super special no, code name doesn't. and costume. No, I like she's the fine she as she is. Yeah, yeah, Bobby, you have not weighed in at all. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> I just letting you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> letting the hate just train a bunch run of hate its train. course. No big deal. This guy's I think an the idiot. Thing, <laughs> the thing that like solidified my being done with this article, though. Was, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to, like, talk about Batwoman and they're trying to, like, they mentioned, okay, there was also a little nod to at least one Bat hero in last night's episode. As Kara said, my cousin worked with a vigilante once. Tons of gadgets, lots of demons. Vigilantes are nuts. Um, I, I, uh, like, okay. Um. Maybe they, they start just, saying maybe that's just like a little hint at yeah, Green it, Arrow or something. It's, well, I yeah, could be that too. Um, it's an Easter egg, no matter what. Yeah. But you know, they're reading into um the episode four, like the the Alien Fight Club, and that they have the they wore the masks to the fight. That's that's it. Like that was a that was a reasoning. They were like. Perhaps the sight of Alex in something that's not terribly dissimilar to Batwoman's signature eye mask is a bit of foreshadowing. No, it is not. No, it is. Calm down. Stop it. This person's getting way too excited way too quick. And then they said, um, it's not a perfect theory, of course. Alex Danvers isn't Kate Kane, though it isn't always Kate who takes up the Batwoman woman mantle. She's held it most consistently, and it'll be Kate Kane who appears in Batwoman in DC's upcoming series. Um, no, you are wrong. Kate Kane, Kathy Kane, whichever version of Catherine Kane, your whatever, whichever one you choose, what the hell ever, she is the only Batwoman. Back in the 50s, it was Kathy Kane. Now she's referred to as Kate Kane, but it has never been someone with a different name. There's never been another Batwoman. And the character has only been like actually back and prevalent for the past decade. 2006 is when they brought her back. So I don't know what this person thinks they know about things. But I don't agree with you, Megan Logan. I don't know. You don't seem to know. You're you're reaching. You're reaching because you want to talk about female empowerment and... Like she's reaching in the dark representation. Uh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, like I, I, I understand the, um, I understand the comparison of them as characters and, and as uh, a character type and kind of that representation and that I agree with and, and playing that role for basically the same role that Kate Kane plays in the DC universe. Alex Danvers kind of being that character for Supergirl is great. It makes sense. She's a a strong, powerful woman who doesn't take shit from people and is not to be trifled with. Um, and, and yeah, like that's awesome, but I don't think we need to slap a fucking bat mask on her and a red wig and call her Batwoman for her to be effective as a character. I don't think that needs that is what's revolutionizing DC TV. I think she as a character is is doing that and we don't need the help of some code name. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's I told you guys I was going to hate train it. Um but that's yeah, that's that's where I'm at with that. Um are we taking a little break or no? Yeah. That, okay. 
All right, we are going to take a quick break and then we will back and we'll jump into the episode. Get me a salad for lunch. I don't care what kind as long as it has a cheeseburger on top. DC on CW. We'll be right back. Have you missed an episode of DC on CW? Catch up on all of our discussions from Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow. Just search DC on CW on iTunes and Stitcher. You can also find it on the Rain Man Digital app. Just search Rain Man Digital from the iTunes App Store or Google Play. The Star Wars, the actual title, then you have Darth Vader, and those things are interconnected, like, beautifully, how oh, yeah. they're working. And then you have Princess Leia, which I know you're not a big fan of. Uh, just the artwork. The artwork kind of is. I haven't, I haven't, that's, that's like the one I haven't, because I've been busy. The artwork sh- is shitty, man. I don't know. I, don't I, like I actually it, dude. like the artwork. It looks so cheesy. It looks cheesy. Explain it. Sell me on it, David. Sell me on it. Because I have well, also I've heard other people say the same thing that the Leia artwork is not the story is good, but the artwork is kind of cheese. The artwork. Bit. The the only reason why I'm a big fan of the artwork is because I'm a big fan of the artist. Okay. And is that his style? That's their style. They're they're very famous for drawing female characters, and in, in the past it's always been they've always been the go to person to draw very sexy female characters, mm-hmm. sexy and strong. Like he. They've, yeah, they're on the strong. They're on the strong there. You don't done, want to be hated done, on. Like, str- <laughs> they've done like <laughs> she Hulk strong. All, all their models. They're really good at drawing nice, nice toned, nice toned buns, buns thick thighs. Thick thigh. It's feminist approved. <laughs> you have to call you have to call them breasts, okay? <laughs> I understand that he became he kind of, he was this all powerful Jedi and now he's just kind of a henchman and and now you see reasons the what, what they're writing in between yeah it fills in the gaps and really shows how Palpatine kind of treats him like a bitch. Well, no, well, on top like, of that, you do wonder why Emperor Palpatine, of course, yeah. puts all this power into Darth Vader but treats him like a henchman. Yeah, I'm also it's also probably a, a Sith move to keep him in check so he doesn't become too big for his britches and slay him. You know what yeah. I mean? That's probably another. I mean, that's that's classic Sith one hundred and one. Yeah, Sith that's what I was thinking about the whole time. But if you, he gets too big for his britches. You know, his job as a Sith is to kill his master and take his place. Right. But the Emperor also sees that basically how powerful Darth Vader can be. Oh, Annie, you've become so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have watched you since you were just a youngling. <laughs> and now your lightsaber has grown. <laughs> I understand why Star Wars is nominated. I mean, it's just the continuation of the previous six films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Greg's voice when he does that one. I just, want, I just want them to. It, it's got to be nominated for best visual effects. I mean, if if and if that well, is for that, like whatever it loses to, better be a fucking dynamo of visual effects. The, the art community, uh, whether it be the Academy or the Emmys, they don't ever give sci-fi yeah their that's fair what I shake. Mean. It, they, they I mean, because if they did, Battlestar Galactica would have won every single Emmy for the entire six years it was on the air. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's, I mean, Battlestar Galactica is easily one of the best science fiction operas to ever grace television, and they won dick. Yeah, we here at the Academy Awards believe that science fiction isn't really a viable medium. In- film or television. I mean, science and fiction just don't work. I mean, I science mean, is fact and <laughs> fiction is fiction. <laughs> <laughs> the name itself makes no sense. <laughs> I sit with myself inside my room with all my awards, inside my smoke, inside my fireside chair and my smoking jacket, and I laugh at all these science fiction films that come out. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, indubitably. Oh, yeah. crazy. West Sunday. Do I think it's a weird West? No, but I think it's a, a Western with a lot of symbolism in it. And I think any traditional Western fan's going to really, really enjoy it. And, uh, enjoy, and they're going to enjoy the journey. 
I would say it leans more to the traditional side with a psychedelic twist due in part to the absinthe-induced dream. Now, let's say the dream was caused by a spell, a magical spell, or the dream was caused by some weird, you know, um, let's say ambiguous omen that was instilling dreams in this kid's brain, then yes, I'd yeah. say this is definitely a Weird West. But because it was done through alcohol... Catch up on your favorite Weird West discussions from Mike and Clint every Sunday on Rain Man Channel 001. Listen from the Rain Man digital app or tune in. Just search RM Channel 001. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you do just about anything for it? Well, that's exactly how we feel about you. That's right. AdamandEve.com wants you so bad. We're giving you 10 free gifts with your first order. You heard me right. That's 10 free gifts to spice up your love life. First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her. Second, an adventurous toy for him. And third, a little something we know you'll both enjoy. Plus, you'll get six full-length adult movies on DVD. And number 10, free shipping on your entire order. That's 10 free gifts for you shy types who've never tried Adam and Eve before. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy, a sexy piece of lingerie, or anything you desire. Just enter offer code DEAL30 at checkout and you'll get all 10 free gifts, including free shipping. That's offer code DEAL30. That's D-E-A-L-30 at adamandeve.com. You're listening to Rain Man Digital's DC on CW. All right, guys, we are back, and now we are going to talk about Supergirl Season 2, Episode 7, The Darkest Play. Best name. It was directed by Glenn Best Winter. Best name ever. <laughs> directed by Glenn Winter and written by Robert Rovner and Paula Yu. Um, we kind of already discussed the synopsis a bit, Angelica but Angelica, do your thing. Alex is complaining and bitching about how Maggie doesn't love her and should really mopey about it kind of bitchy and then she confronts her about it and uh we'll see how that turns out also she might be batwoman by the way <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> and uh the guardian is actually pretty cool and he's making us hate james a lot less but i still hate james but i'm a fan of the guardian <laughs> yeah basically is that- i became a fan of the guardian this episode god damn it I'm so mad about it <laughs> But uh, All right. yeah, it's pretty much pretty much what happened. Other than <laughs> rescues within <laughs> rescues, rescue inceptions. This is a super girl rescue ranger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right, um, we've only got two weeks left until the midseason finale, and next week is when the whole invasion storyline starts. Well, you can feel like Ty is like, co- like closing up and stuff like that like you can feel that like something's coming to a close here so it's that and and the um the tensions with cadmus and the um spotlight on aliens Mm -hmm. and and their role on earth is kind of heightening right now i feel like it's we're really getting into like hey aliens 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 even more than we were yeah because now all this shit with like cadmus is really coming to the forefront um so we we're really getting into Cadmus. Uh, we have an introduction to Cyborg Superman, which I thought was a little cheesy, but we'll get to that. Um, so she, Supergirl, attempts to rescue Monel. They they finally find out that he is. At, well, she finally finds out that he's at Cadmus. They're drinking at the beginning of the episode, making jokes about like, what do you call a male floozy? A daxamite. It was good. <laughs> like. It was so good, especially because I don't think I've ever... Oh, no, not ever. I have not recently heard the word floozy on TV, so it made me very happy. That's true. I mean, I use that word it's, a lot, but still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. It's the only word they can get away with. Right. Like, but, you can't really be like, what's a male whore? Uh, a tart? A hussy? A um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's so many things. The list goes on and uh, on. We can keep going on Also, there. I'm pretty sure they could say ho. Hooker lady, hooker man, <laughs> hooker man. man hook. That's gonna be his new. Uh, that's gonna be his superhero name, hooker man. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, all jokes aside about how much of a male floozy he is, 
they're they're thinking that he's just probably at some girl's place and really he's in a cell at Cadmus. Supergirl gets the call from Bitchy McBitchface and <laughs> she goes to try and rescue him, gets confronted by Hank, who we saw at the first part of the episode, which threw me right the hell off. It, it had yeah, to do to everybody. Like it did not flow very well. I, I thought... I thought I forgot something. I've been so crazy busy. It's like Thanksgiving week and and I, you know, I'm I'm dealing with trying to like organize everything and deal with my work closing and, you know, not being there for a couple of days and so I've been so busy that when I went to watch the episode this morning, I thought I thought I just forgot something. I was like, "Oh shit, did Hank get did did John get okay. All right, I guess he's captured." <laughs> and that's all I thought. Um, but then, of course, we uh, we see Supergirl get confronted by Hank, who is the real Hank Henshaw, who survived more or less what happened years ago when he encountered Martian Manhunter for the first time. Um, so I. I OK, so we see Bobby was saying we see the fight twice between Supergirl and Hank. Um, I. Don't really know what you mean by that. What is the what opening you... scene? You see it, and then you see it later when he's actually revealed to be Cyborg Superman. They make you believe that Hank was something happened with him and his blood that he was attacking her for some reason. Oh, that's, that's what they were trying <gasps> to do. Oh, that's like yeah. That that's what I got out of it. And those like you know that because it was the initial shot of the show. Hmm. I thought maybe Hank was having the side effect of the blood, which caused him to go out and attack her for some reason. Oh. And then, you know, you don't get that reveal till later that something is really up with them. Okay. Yeah, I, no, I don't know. That that didn't click with me at all. I didn't, it did, it I didn't did think about like that that way. It did feel like you missed something. Yes. Like, it didn't yeah. feel like a flash forward, I guess it's, I don't know, probably because yeah, that's not um, usually the formula, so it definitely didn't feel. No, the the whole thing wasn't the formula this yeah. week. Yeah, it, I mean, from the beginning shot of them doing that 360 around the bar scene mm -hmm. to recapping Guardian to doing all that, that is not a this. <laughs> that is not a Supergirl shot but at all. I did like the opening bar scene. I did like them kind of like gossiping and gabbing amongst themselves about Guardian, kind yeah. of kind of catching up between themselves because we do have a couple of storylines that have been going parallel to each other. So I I did like that scene of them kind of getting together and discussing yeah. the things that they don't discuss together. But just everything they did this week wasn't anything we've seen before. Yeah. And then that's probably why it felt weird to everybody is we don't see like, like you said, flash forwards. We don't see them cut away and do like flashbacks to, you yeah. know, Jimmy fighting off three guys in an alley and all this other stuff. And it was completely different than like, like anything. And, yeah. and, and and I think that kind of set like that weird tone of what's going on this week. I think some of it was really fun. Some of it was really successful. And then other parts were a little bit wonky. And I think really the only parts I had a problem with were those surrounding Hank Henshaw. Um, not not John, but Hank, because, yeah, it just it was very sudden. It was a little bit confusing. You didn't feel like you were up to speed on stuff you felt like you missed something and not in a oh my god what's happening but like did i did, did he get, get what's happening yeah they, like, they never went back and showed like you know the whole monel like oh you know he's you better do what he say or they're gonna kill hank or and yeah. all that other stuff it yeah. just it felt weird because you had no thing of like Hank's missing or, you know, what could have happened was Hank would have could have been in his apartment having like a fever sweats or whatever from <laughs> side effects of the blood, you know, that he I wasn't got that too much macaroni sweat, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that he wasn't there and around and people were worried about him. And then those kind of flash forward scenes would have worked that he got captured by Cadmus. Yeah. So. All right. Kind of moving on from that. We. We discussed in season one, we speculated um, that Hank Henshaw was going to be Cyborg Superman. Because red eyes because, for four episodes. Yeah. Because red eyes. <laughs> yeah, so the second time that we see Hank in the episode, it clicked right there for me. I was like, oh, we're getting, we're getting Cyborg Superman right here. That's what's going to happen. Are, yeah, it was... Yeah, it was, it was... And you know... It was... They could have done with... <laughs> 
<laughs> they could have done without they the beginning d- and i would have been fine with that like i i get that they were trying to do something but it wasn't necessary yeah Your turn. it didn't work <laughs> it was uh it was definitely it was weird to see um it, it was like weird and somehow still kind of satisfying to see hank henshaw you know really end up being cyborg superman um so hank henshaw dates Back to the nineties. I mean, that's it, right? Just nineteen ninety is when he was his yeah. first appearance, right? Um, and then Cyborg Superman, like Hank Henshaw as Cyborg Superman. Um, he was an astronaut at NASA. A solar flare hit his space shuttle, um, and it damaged the ship and crew. He and the crew found that their bodies began to mutate, and after returning to Earth, their entire crew, including Henshaw's wife, eventually committed suicide. Um, that's a little dark. Jesus fucking Christ. After, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after learning that Superman had thrown the Eradicator into the sun in a battle, uh, Henshaw blamed Superman for the solar flare and the accident. Uh, before his body completely disintegrated due to the radiation exposure, he was able to save his consciousness. So using NASA communications equipment, he beamed his mind into the birthing matrix, which had carried Superman from Krypton to Earth as an infant. And he created a small exploration craft from the birthing matrix and departs into outer space alone. Becoming increasingly mentally unstable, Henshaw used used Superman's birthing matrix to create a body identical to Superman's, albeit with cybernetic parts. And he returned to Earth to kill Superman, only to discover that Superman had already died during his absence. Uh, That's really disappointing. Yeah, right? (laughs) Right? My whole life's goal is to come back and kill you. (laughs) My one purpose in life. But it was the death of Superman, which we all know was a very short-lived thing. And he uh, was resurrected. And he became... uh, Henshaw became a recurring adversary of Superman um, and of Green Lantern. Uh, He became a member of the Sinestro Corps during Blackest Night. So... That's your crash course on Cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw. Does it, um, does it make sense in this setting what they did to call him Cyborg Superman? No. No. Because he's supposed to look like Superman. Uh, yeah. What are you talking and, about? There was Cyborg stuff. That's all you <laughs> need, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, why did they not even like do anything remotely, remotely close to it? Like, I don't understand. Like. I also don't understand because at this point it seems like his big adversary is Martian Manhunter. Yeah. I'm Cyborg M- Martian Manhunter. Yeah, you should be mad at the guy who yeah. took him out. So what I it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um I, I think they can turn it around. I think they can kind of tweak it and fix it so that it makes sense, but they didn't even like maybe they'll explain it by Cadmus um saying we created him like we we took his body and we you know um replaced a lot with cybernetic parts and uh gave him these powers to uh oppose superman and now that will make sense but for hank henshaw as an introduction to kara in that fight for him to just turn and say i'm cyborg superman i was like "Mm, but are you really though there was nothing that gave us any sort of superman vibe from him yeah and we had always wondered where they were going to get the blood from to create it. Right. You know, which was and that's what we thought were going to was going to happen. Right. Even this week. And they drew her blood and all he does is use it to get into fucking Fortress of Solitude. Which okay, not like that's a small thing. That's a big deal, but yeah. <laughs> all he Wait, does no, is break he didn't into the use fortress. It to get into it like he used it to break into like the computer essentially. Like Well, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. To get into like all of the tech but how in did he Fortress, break in? he's strong. He's, he's strong as hell. He's strong enough to move the key. Strong. He can lift the key. <laughs> he beat the crap out of Kara, and Kara can lift the key. Yeah. That's true. So, yeah. But I mean, yeah. So that's that's a big deal, and that's very bad because now he's looking up uh, Medusa and stuff like that. So it's a big deal, but also it it felt uh, it felt underwhelming to have them take her blood and. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm one part glad that they didn't use it for nefarious like experiments and stuff like that to alter people's DNA and like mutate stuff. But on the other hand, it did feel underwhelming that they didn't use it for anything like that to create Cyborg Superman or anything like that. They just gave him cybernetic body parts and called it a day and gave him the Superman name, even though he has no beef with Superman. 
So yeah. he's cyborg man, is what you're saying. <laughs> he's cyborg, but he, not cyborg. But we can't call him cyborg. Yeah. Um, he's bad cyborg. Mean cyborg. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I so the the question now becomes: Is he going to be a proper villain for the rest of the season? Uh, is he going to basically lead the charge for Cadmus, um, or is he gonna be another not necessarily villain of the week, but like a quick turnover right there? Um, I feel like he's gonna be around for a while. I I feel like he is there. They're they're number one. You know, he's going to be their go to guy because they spent all this time. Setting make, him up. Yeah. And making him strong enough to take on Supergirl. Y- you don't hope they don't figure it out in a week and a half. Right. Um, it seems like they're putting all their eggs in Cyborg Superman's basket. Do you. I'm trying to think here. I just went blank. Sorry. OK. Um, then let's talk about his acting then. Um, David Hardwood. I mean, we've seen him play multiple roles in this show before. We've seen him, you know, play Hank Henshaw and then go back to Jean version of Hank. And he does a great job. He makes me believe that he's two different people. Um, This time, we got to see him as Cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw. Um, We got to see him as... The real Hank Henshaw cyborg Superman pretending to be uh, Jean Hank imprisoned with mon and begging him, no, just run, leave me. Um, and then, of course, we get to see him have a couple different interactions as angry, <laughs> angry Jean in Hank's body and Jean in his green Martian skin. So he had a lot going on this week. Um, you feel like he should get multiple paychecks if you're pulling that much weight. Right. I mean, so who do I have to be this time? Yeah, seriously. How many rules do I have this week? All right, cool. Well, I'm only going to get credit for one. The CW has done a really good job like with the shows that, that we watch, like our superhero shows. Uh, they've done a really good job with doing that multiple times. Like in Flash with... Like with the same actor yeah. playing different... Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool to see. I think... Do you think that's part of the casting process at this point? Like, okay, play this character. Now play this character. But if these things happened, then they were much angrier. <laughs> well, you you wonder, like, at the beginning when they casted him, did they know that, okay, you are going, this is the path we're going down with your character. You're yeah. going to be this dude pretending to be a dude who's a Martian. And then you're going to go back to be the dude you originally were. But then you're going to be the guy who... Is supposed to be the guy who you originally were, but now you have uh, robot parts in you. I'm a, <laughs> now you got robot I'm a parts. Dude dressed as robot. a dude and, and, disguised as another dude. Yeah. That whole and, thing. Yeah, and now you're going to be the the alien mixed with a little bit of another alien. Yeah. And you're going to have to act like that other alien does, but kind of keep what you do, too. I'm interested to see where his acting goes and where the, where the character goes. Not just his acting, but... John as a character because now you know we've got him hallucinating he's seeing visions of his family he's seeing um that's not even the worst part i know i know i get there he saw that (laughs) he saw that white martian and almost shot a dude in the deo and the doughiest looking guy too (laughs) poor dude he's just like boss i'm just the it guy leave me alone i loved you (laughs) his face i looked up to you (laughs) Did I do something? Did I make you mad? <laughs> um, and he, uh, you know, he he has Alex run the tests and knows exactly what he's looking at when it comes up on the screen. Doesn't tell Alex. So I kind of wonder, I, I kind of wonder if he's going to try and tough it out on his own. But he finds out when he goes and talks to McGann, uh, McGon and eventually beats the crap out of her. Um, finds out he's mutating into a white martian is that is that a canon thing or i don't know okay either, I, either I, did i i just was wondering if that was one of those things that yeah that's something that i don't know i i'm not sure that that's something that's been explored before if someone not a lot of blood transfusions going on in comic books these days well, yeah well, i mean we don't want comics aids going around comic <laughs> aids um 
if if someone is listening not, and does know of some sort of instance, please let us know. Please tweet at us or message us on Facebook or leave a comment on on something. Um, let us know because um, I'm very interested to know if this is something that has gone on in the DC universe in comics before or not. But I I have not heard of anything like that happening where you know white Martian blood was tainting Jean's green Martian blood and making him mutate into a white Martian. Do you think they? They they they're gonna have to figure it out, right? They can't have him like go full blown white guy. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> um, I entertained myself. That's all that matters. Well, it was good. Uh, knowing what we know now, knowing that he is changing, um, you know, there's the big question of is he going to find a, is the DEO going to find a way to stop or, and or reverse it, and then also. McGon, what the fuck? Come on, like I, I don't know. Was he really that close to death? I feel like Alex was just thinking, oh, we've got another Martian. We might as well give him a blood transfusion to speed up this healing process. Um, yeah, did did she know that that was gonna happen? I mean, she kind of she did. does. She did. Yeah. She did. Yeah, she knew. 100%. She did know. She knew. That's what we confirmed this week. Is she knew? Um, and I. For however much she hates herself, which we also saw, we saw that be very apparent. Um, we we got to see the fight between them, and they first of all, the fight was pretty cool. Um, her side of it too, like her, like I didn't want it, like I was that girl in in the internment camps, like her performance as well. I really like her as a character and her acting too. Like it, it, it was really cool to see, like and her just like fine if you need to kill me, just kill me. Like yeah, that. kill me in the form kill that I want to be. Yeah, kill me, but not like yeah. that. This is who I want to be. And I talked about it before, how Miss Martian she has some, so some self-loathing. <laughs> yeah, no, she she totally did. Um, and it's it's true. That, that is very integral to the character of Miss Martian. Whether she's some, like, teeny bopper on Young Justice or, you know, this version that we've got on Supergirl, she has some serious self-loathing. For her own race because of what they were because of who they were and how they treated the green Martians and it's it's like you know being a Nazi who doesn't want to be a Nazi I will not guess this Jew yeah exactly um, that, but that really is she doesn't want to be like that and of course then that means that she can't look at her white Martian form with pride first of all they're not so pretty but like if if they're <laughs> They're pretty monstrous compared to Green Martians. Yeah. Oh, they are but, monstrous, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, given that they look like that and they're, you know, hell-bent on the genocide of the Green Martians and they're cruel and vicious and violent, um, if she's not like that, it makes perfect sense that she can't stand to look at that form. She can't stand to look at herself like that. That's not who she wants to be, and she she doesn't like it. So I'm I'm glad that they're really sticking to that. And she did sell it. You're totally right, Angelica. Like, um, I I believed her when she said, you know, this is who I want to be. I don't want to be that. If you're gonna kill me, kill me like this. Um, Does this mean he's not going for the crossover? I don't know. I mean, or he could be a part of it and just be having some side effects throughout it. Yeah. I just wouldn't, or, because it would be like confusing to people that haven't watched the show. If all of a sudden, you know, Martian Manhunter's over there going spastic. Yeah. Or maybe the crossover is when or how or whatever he gets to find a way to kind of reverse this or, or at least prevent it from going further. Yeah. Barry runs him backwards. Or maybe he comes in contact with another alien that knows something. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it could be any number of things. Um, so, all right. After a failed attempt to rescue Supergirl, um, we get to learn more about Cadmus and Lillian Luther. So, um, we learn that Cadmus kidnapped mon L to get to Supergirl. Because, I mean, kind of obviously... Well, I thought last week we weren't really sure. We thought maybe that was going to be the cyborg Superman. Maybe. Because he had the power, like, yeah. similar powers that they could, you know, research on. That's true. And that does, that did make sense as a theory for sure. But, um. They ditched that real quick. Supergirl is kind of like the end game for them, though. So that's not surprising to me that that's their goal. Um. We, we get to see Kara learn 
that Lillian Luther is obviously Lena Luther's mom. Um, we get to see that connection. She recognizes her right off the bat and says, you know, oh, I saw you in Lena Luther's office. Who are you? Um, so we also get some serious backstory. I, I'm pretty sure I heard Kara refer to Lex as Alex. But maybe that was just kind of a like a, a slur between words or something. Because mm. I swear I heard her say like Alex and Lena's um, mother. And I was like, you're on those terms with him? Like, you know, Alexander, are you going to call him that now? But yeah, Go by his proper government name. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it was either me mishearing something or she just kind of like slurred letters together or something like that. But um, we get to see that. Lillian, her whole hatred is founded in Superman's supposed betrayal of Lex Luthor, um, how he came to him and sold him his propaganda of this and that and like, you know, glory and helping the world. And poor little Alex was just trying to keep Superman's power in check. Um she is she is completely convinced that Lex is not evil. He's 100% good and and for the greater good of the world and her poor genius baby son is in prison for the rest of his life. Now for us as viewers it's really easy to look at her and go, "Oh, you crazy bitch." First of all, from what we've seen from her so far, and then in addition to that, just knowing, even if you don't know a lot about Lex Luthor or Superman or comics or whatever, bottom line is you probably know that Lex is his number one adversary. And he hasn't, that's not for no reason. Lex is hellbent on power. Um, He's not crazy. He's very well put together. He's very intelligent and he's not like off his rocker. He's just uh uh, he's he's hell bent on getting all the power he can, and he's going to do what it takes. He is not very sympathetic. Uh, he he does not take other people into account, other than what they can be used for. He's very objective, and and so knowing that, it's easy for us to look at her and go, "Oh yeah, you're just evil. You're bad." Oh, or it's the old my baby can't do anything wrong in my eyes. Well, and and <laughs> yes, but like. But she seems to clearly agree with the things that Lex did. Yeah. And if the things that he did landed him in prison, well, probably, ipso facto, they were bad. Um, do you think that the the mother's revenge backstory is, is like, it makes for good TV, makes for a good story? I like it for, like, something different. Like, it's it's different than what would be in the comics. And I... I like the way that she spun it too, just like my baby boy and stuff like that. Like it was, it was cool and psychotic in a way as well, just because she's doing whatever she can to protect it. And this, this yeah. show is definitely about like women and like girl power and things like that. And to like make the main villain, a woman who was like protecting her son, essentially. Like I, I thought that was really, really cool. Well, and her daughters too. So another strong yeah. female character. She seems to have a rocky relationship with Lena, though, because Lena yeah. seems to have surprisingly. And even though we've been a little bit like skeptical we're and wondering like, which one of them was going to be the bad. Yeah, one. We're like, we're concerned. We're just like, I want to trust Lena, but she's still a Luther. Um, but yeah, I I think she's um, I think it I think it's good for this series. And actually, we've really had our, our two big villains towards the, the beginnings of both of these seasons have been women. Um, and that's not to say that they're the only ones, especially with like Astra dying last season, you know, it became her husband. That was the villain after that. And that's super cool that it, it doesn't, they don't really stress it. They just do it. You know, they just give us a strong female villain. Yeah. And it's, and, and then they move on. Like it doesn't have to be. Women, everything, girl power all the time. Please focus on it always. It's not it's, pun- it doesn't punch you in the face. It's, it's just, just there. there. They just do it. Um, and yeah, I think that especially Supergirl's story, the whole series is all about family. So I think this being rooted in in a family thing, some some family revenge, I think really fits with with Kara, with the Danvers, with all of her family drama. So 
I think it's cool to to take that spin, like you said, Angelica, making it different from the comics and making the Luther, uh, the the Luther vendetta and their whole story be very family rooted. It makes perfect sense for Supergirl. Um, so I, what also, did you guys when you think? think about We're, it like family style, like that sounds family style. Huh? When you think about like the family, like. <laughs> We're getting the extra large size. <laughs> <laughs> the family being like just so like connected and stuff like and so like dark like it goes back to like even their mother who's just like no we will take them down because they've done us wrong like it makes it that much richer of a character and, and a story. Yeah. Um. So continuing on with uh, Mama Luther she wants Kara's blood. And we thought it was going to be for Cyborg Superman, um, but he already got introduced to us, and it's not for that. It's for him, but not to put into him. Um, so I, oh, I thought that it was a uh, the scene where they take her. You know, she agrees to it, and she solar flares and expends her energy, and then gets taken to go get her blood drawn. I thought it was a bit cheesy it was a little bit campy it was too uh like d-list horror film yeah because that, that, that's going down the creepy hallway with the flashing lights and everything yeah like i thought the first the first bit where they were dragging her down the hallway um i was like oh this this has an arrow vibe to it at first yeah. and i was like ah, oh, cool it's very gritty because it's supposed to be a dark moment she's supposed to be terrified you should be terrified with her she has no powers she can't defend herself cool and then, yeah, it, it turned into this campy, like, we're going to take your blood and you're going to be scared. Uh, I don't know. Let I me didn't... tie your head down real quick and all <laughs> yeah. those stereotypical. I don't think I really bought it from anyone. And I'm sorry, but I don't think that um, Lillian was really going to take the time to put a mask over her mouth and stuff before taking cars. But I don't Somebody think Somebody made like... it weird. <laughs> yeah. We that someone was like, let's go all out for this scene in this episode. And it just it didn't work for me. I don't know if it was the director, know. but there were definitely some choices in this episode. that I was just like, where are we? Like, why are you? Why? Why are you doing this? Like it it definitely took you out of the episode because there was that moment when you first saw it and you were like, oh, yeah, that's Arrow-esque. And like mm -hmm. the color scheme of it and how dark it was and gritty. And then it was just like. Well, where the fuck are we now? What is this? Yeah, because then it got into like a weird yellow kind of color yeah. scheme and stuff. And it was very strange. Um, it, The whole thing was definitely darker than we're used to on Supergirl. It really was. And and that was um, that was fine. It was good. It, it's OK to get darker than than normal in certain scenes, because overall, the show isn't super dark. It can get a little gritty at times, but it's not overwhelmingly dark and and scary and gritty and terrible so um it was it's cool that they went there with it because she i think that we should feel scared along with her or or at least feel like it's a dark time it's a dark situation um but something about it pulled me back out of it after that first hallway scene um we do see another familiar face return to rescue mon el and Kara. um I honestly didn't even think about it when a hooded figure comes up to Kara and says, you know, hurry, come on, we got to go. I was like, who the fuck is this? And then, of course, it's the return of Dean Kane, Jeremiah Danvers. Yeah. Um, did you think it was going to happen that soon? Like, I know that we like saw Hank. And did that even occur to you? No, because I kind of forgot about him at that <laughs> point because they, they haven't talked about him in a well, while. No, it was like, oh, don't worry, we'll get Jeremiah from Cadmus. And, and now, then it was like, oh. Yeah, he's right. He's in Cadmus. <laughs> yeah, now I kind of have a case of blue balls because they've they've shown us that he's there. But of course, you know, there was no time for him to explain to Kara what's going on or whatever. Um, but he's totally fine by all appearances anyway. Um, he doesn't seem to have been experimented on or at least not anything crazy. He could also be a cyborg. He hasn't person. had his eye knocked off yet. Right. We have no idea what's happened to him. We have no idea if they've been holding him captive and like torturing him. He clearly has an ID card and I don't know if that was his or if he stole it from someone. But from the looks of it, he's working for Cadmus and probably as a deal in the same way that the DEO got him and Hank was like, hey, you're going to fucking work for us or we're taking the kid. 
Um, so I, I have to wonder, I, I don't know. I don't know what he's up to. I, I want to believe that he is still good. I'm sure he is, but what the hell's going on? Cause they don't tell us, they don't explain it. Um, it, it's, I'm, I feel like Kara in this situation. I feel very frustrated by the lack of information. And I, I know that that's giving us buildup for whatever whatever's, the reveal is, whatever's, whatever's wrong with him or whatever he's mm-hmm. doing. There's something there. There, It's not all peachy. There's something wrong. There's something terrible going on. We just don't know what yet. Is it almost to me it almost felt like a setup that she got away so like easy with yeah, him. Absolutely. Like, you know, like, oh, we got your blood. We're done with you. We'll come back when we're ready to finish this. And that's yeah. what I'm wondering if he's going to end up being some kind of double agent or maybe he's a cyborg, like you said, also. Right. And I I just think it was it was also real convenient that he was able to get them out of the cells, get the bullet out of mon L's leg, chit chat with them for a second, say kind of a long goodbye to Kara and like send them down, you know, that exit and get them out of out of there when when we think about when Monel was trying to escape earlier in the episode, you know, he knocked the guard out. He took his ID card, got out of there, ran and was immediately stopped by people who were like waiting for it and had um, I mean, they, they were carrying Hank Henshaw as though he was a prisoner. They had it set up. They had it prepared. So yeah. they knew he got out of the cell. There is something going on that we don't know about. And I hope so, at I, least, because otherwise this whole episode's writing style and everything was just like really like not up to par with what it's been like if that's the story that they're sticking with and nothing get, gets explained later as to like why did they make these decisions it it's yeah very uh just not our usual writing style or directing yeah well i mean so he's he stays behind at Cas at cadmus and i just i have to believe that it's a double cross i have to i or there's something terrible going on he's being blackmailed or he's being controlled or it wasn't really him or anything yeah you know um there's something deep and dark there that we haven't gotten into i i thought i hope he ends up being cyborg superman and puts on like the suit one more time as like this you know cyborg yeah well, and then the other the other thing, too, um, is you were mentioning, you know, do you think this was like an act that they let her out on on purpose, whatever? So um, it it does seem Bobby pointed out, like, you know, if it if they caught her for her blood and that's what they wanted her for, did they just release her because they were done with her? And And I think that that's probably what we're looking at. I think it was probably a constructed situation. Um, they let Jeremiah probably thought he was. Maybe yeah. not probably maybe Jeremiah thought he was really rescuing them and and when in reality Lillian was like okay we're gonna let her think that she escaped yeah because you figure if they hold her for too long her cousin's gonna come yeah the, you know DEO is gonna staff up and figure out what the hell's going on yeah it's so, just not like if I disappeared nobody be looking for me very long um so we got a couple more things so to terrible. cover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I don't have a cousin with superpowers that's gonna come find me. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I also don't. I don't know. People yeah, will be like, where'd she go? I don't know. Who we knows? might get a milk carton or a telephone pole. <laughs> a milk carton. <laughs> do they still do that? I think it's all about Facebook now. Oh yeah. My cousin went missing. I might get an amber alert. Would it I don't think it's an amber alert. I think you're somewhere in between amber and silver. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> find this dumb fuck alert. Um, all right. So, um, jumping back to Cyborg Superman, he takes the blood that they got from Supergirl. He goes to the Fortress of Solitude, like we discussed, and he uh, he uses the blood. He just haphazardly jump the dumps it all over his hand and just slaps that baby down on the console. Not and, what I expected. <laughs> yeah, me either. I was like, all right, I. That's one way to do it, I suppose. Um, and he asks the computer about the project they call Medusa. And I I have to wonder what they're going to do with that. Um, Bobby, before we even say anything about it, do you have any theories? Because you always have theories about everything. I, with this one, I didn't. Just because Medusa is such a vague 
like term through DC and like even mythos and everything that, you know, that's out there that is hard to kind of, especially even after last year with Myriad come out and you're like, oh, this is what Myriad's going to be. It's like, well, do we think it's going to be another project that they're hiding? Is it going to be a person? Is it going to be, you know, I I don't know. Um, You know, this thing will turn all aliens to stone. (laughs) You know, I mean, legitimately, you don't. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, obviously it's going to turn everyone to stone. Duh. (laughs) It's a (laughs) snakehead. Yeah. I, I mean, so we do have a character called Medusa in the DC universe, um, who did have their, her first, I mean, it's, it's basically exactly what you expect from Medusa. Um, she, it's all rooted in, you know, the, the Greek mythology and everything. And she's the, the chief of the Gorgons, turns people to stone with her eyes, et cetera, et cetera. It's all of that stuff. Um, but kind of, rooted in wonder woman's it's weird she's kind of rooted in wonder woman's lore because um medusa's sisters were imprisoned on themyscira and uh they they resurrected medusa um it's a whole bunch of stuff that has to do with like themyscira and wonder woman and especially with all of the recent wonder woman stuff where you know she's kind of like a they consider her a god killer and everything like that she's very much rooted in Greek mythology there. So maybe they but, go with that route. You said, you know, the God killer part of it. But Well, no, Wonder Woman is what uh, I was oh, saying. No, I know. But you, you think of the God killer, you know, the people looked at the stupors as gods, especially in the movies. It, yeah, but I mean, like, Wonder Woman was the one called God killer. Oh, oh okay. My yeah, bad. not Medusa. Yeah, that the, there was like a whole, like, uh, God killer storyline thing for, for Wonder Woman. Gotcha. Um, I still want but, to happen. <laughs> The interesting thing is that this this character, Medusa, she did have her first appearance in Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. That series. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe we're looking at that. Maybe we're looking at a similar thing to Myriad where they're going to kind of, you know, um, resurrect this Medusa being or something like that. I don't really know what they're going to do. It could be something super vague just to do literally with like turning things to stone, turning aliens to stone, whatever, um, paralyzing them, however you want to to mean it. Um, it's it's very, very ambiguous right now. Completely ambiguous. Um, it doesn't it doesn't tell us anything. So. I, I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have no it's more It's going to be an interesting. And how long are we going to? Yeah. Hopefully they stay with Cadmus and whatever this Medusa storyline is and they keep evolving it. It's not just going to be like coming back in February and then we finally talk about it in March or, you know, later on. Yeah. So um, there there is also um, Medusa had like a, a crime cartel in Gotham City. So that was a thing too that I just found out. I just looked at. But and under Batwoman under the employment of the DEO has sworn to take it down is like the little blurb there about it. Um I don't know. There's a another mention of Batwoman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't I don't really know what's going to happen there, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. They could go so many different ways. Um so guardian let's chit chat about him for like a quick minute um i am liking jimmy more do you like jimmy more or guardian both mm. because but James, you like win and jimmy together i love win <laughs> but i like i like that jimmy seems like he's really um he's less pent up he's less aggressive i i feel like he's really feeling fulfilled and that's showing in in his civilian character and as a hero i'm i'm really starting to starting to like jimmy more and i do like guardian i know angelica you said you you felt the same about guardian at least yes that's it yes perfect i was like did she pause or something yeah right (laughs) that's it no But no, it's just, it was um, really cool to see, like, Guardian in action and everything. So, yeah, I guess I like Wynn and the Guardian together, but still, 
I I feel like Jim is just still is such a crybaby. Like, why don't you like the Guardian? Why do you think he's a bad guy? Like, I'm like, fuck off, Jimmy. Good God. To be fair, I feel like it's a little more endearing now rather rather than just frustrating. No. For me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't won um, me over yet. I, I, uh... Okay, that's fair. It could take time. Did you need him to have like the villain in that murder story or could he have just been doing mm, stuff? I, I didn't necessarily need it, but I didn't dislike it. I think we were going to need it at some point. I don't know if this episode was that. I, I feel like it could have happened last episode. Yeah, I, I just didn't know what the whole Alex reveal, you know, finding out already and yeah. all that other stuff, if that was needed in this episode, because it just seemed like, you know, we spent an, almost an hour talking about everything but this. And, the, right, you yeah. know, and, you know, was it kind of shoved in there or could they have definitely i mean it didn't done more trial and error things of the team working him work him and win working together i i liked it but like i said yeah i didn't feel like it needed to be in this episode the very last thing i want to point out and talk about super super quickly because there's not a lot really to say is uh mon l turns to Kara like Aww. back before they get broken out and I, I saved this for the very last yeah. because technically the invasion crossover started in Legends last week. Technically, because that episode aired first and they said our friends need our help back in 2016. But Mon L turns to Kara and says something, you know, he says about Daxum. There's something I need to tell you. Um, holy shit. He knows something that's related to this invasion. He must have like. He must have gotten something back from a distress beacon or, or, or something. He must have known something was headed this way. He knows something about what's coming. You think that's how this fires off then? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, something to do with him because it, it's no coincidence. It's not going to be a coincidence that there are Daxamites ready to invade Earth. So he's connected somehow. And that was our first little tease to that. Um, I think Angelica thought you were going to talk about the love thing. <laughs> I mean, that's adorable. cute and precious. It, it was, precious it was real one. cute. I'm just studying human things. It was real cute. It was. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have any final thoughts about the episode? It was strange yeah. for me. It like, was. That's where we're all at. I feel it, like. You know, there was a lot of stuff going on, and it was a lot of cool things to advance the story. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like anything that I like absolutely hated. It just again, it from the first. 30 seconds it had a weird feel on how it was shot and how it was directed it just it didn't feel like any other supergirl show we've had and i don't know like again it, it when it started off with that 360 shot and you know hank and them fighting and it just it it started weird and it continued down that path even though like i said i believe they they went through their story and it wasn't necessarily like bad writing or bad acting. It, sure. it might have just been the way it was shot and directed I, this week. I think it was just the directing. And I think, we're, yeah, we're kind of all on the same page where like overall it was a it was a good episode. It was fine. Uh, there was a lot of cool stuff that happened in it. And there were a few things that we had some gripes with um, that didn't really feel like Supergirl and that we weren't really super fond of. Um, visually, everything was was good, though. Like s- the cinematography was good. Other than that one like weird campy, like spooky drawing the blood scene but yeah, other than flickering that flickering like, light going down the hallway yeah it was weird <laughs> all these are white light bulbs that one's but, yellow why <laughs> yeah i'd like to Angelica, I'd, do you I'd, got a thing why okay so i know that Kara got drained of everything and stuff uh-huh but what fucking ring was she wearing when she smacked the shit out of her Oh, yeah, that was a bit intense. <laughs> she slapped her and it was just like, I, oh, the blood ever. Oh, no. I was like, oh, OK. I think it was I think it was just for effect. Um, but they could have done with like a little a little slit, like a little cut on yeah. her lip her with like, like, like a, a drop of blood or something. Oh, is that a so, thumb yeah, ring? I, like, I'm that's all I was thinking right there because it was so intense. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. What is she wearing? <laughs> she like, wasn't yeah. wearing anything. But again, everything in that scene was just over the top dramatic. So I was like, yeah, but the rest of the rest of the episode was pretty, pretty good, pretty yeah. normal as far as like the dramatics were concerned. So I overall, I liked it. There were just a couple things where I was like, eh, all just, right, guys, uh, like we said, different feel. Yeah, for sure. 
All right. Uh, that's going to be it for today's DC on CW Supergirl edition. Remember, you can always catch any past and future DC on CW episodes through the Rain Man digital app. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at DC on CW, Facebook.com slash DC on CW and Instagram at DC underscore on underscore CW. Uh, next week starts the invasion crossover. So that's going to be crazy and hectic. And I know we're all looking forward to it. So be sure to tune into all of the shows next week for full coverage of it. And we will catch you next week for the invasion. I'm Supergirl. You're who now? 